My name is Andre Cohen. I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's been a, a pleasure doing these classes. And so one of the things that I wanted to address was this, uh, this idea of, of cultural competence. And so I just did a session not long ago, and I wanted to, there was, I didn't necessarily have enough time to hit all the points that I wanted to hit, but I wanted to make sure that uh, these key markers were introduced as concepts that can be helpful when having conversations about multicultural uh, competence or, or cultural competence, particularly in an organization. And so one of the things that we started off that presentation with was really talking about the, the, the nature of culture and why it's important to be able to tie those features of a culture to, um, to organizational change and development, right? So, so those things were extremely important. So um, I'm going to continue that conversation um, right now. So we'll start with those as, as our kind of primary points of, of understanding. And so one of the things that we talked about was this idea of the, the, the carrot of culture, if you will, right? So there is the, um, there is the, the, the root of the culture, which we will call core values of a culture. And then there are the artifacts of the culture, which are the, the things that are uh, easy to see from, from a cultural standpoint. And so when we talk about this idea of these artifacts and these core values, what we understand is that they are a symbiotic relationship. So there's a symbiotic relationship between the artifacts and the core values, and that the artifacts are actually the physical manifestation of those core values. Having said that, when we start talking about developing um, either cross-cultural uh, competence or cultural competence within an organization, it's important to recognize the relationship between these two pieces, that artifacts are, are directly connected to core values, and core values also need artifacts. Um, I don't know if you've you know, gardened, but if you take off this top layer of, of the carrot, if you take off the stem, if you will, it will be very difficult to locate that particular carrot. And so the same can be said about cultures, that if we um, take away the artifacts, that somehow the culture may get lost. So those two things are extremely important to, to recognize. We also want to recognize that in culture, there's this concept of high context and a low context culture. And so uh, high context means that the, the context is very important in, uh, in that cultural experience. And so when we talk about artifacts, there's some very specific things that high context cultures look for in terms of their artifacts. At the same time, a low context culture will have different types of, of artifacts or things that can be seen. And so we'll, we'll talk about those um, as we further develop this conversation around um, organizational cross-cultural competence. And so um, when we talk about core or deep values, the, the same applies, that there are high context uh, core values and low context core values associated with uh, this, this diagram of the, um, of the carrot. So, so we'll, that's where we'll, that'll be our jumping off point. And so here we have a, uh, a matrix, if you will. We have a matrix of, um, of cultures that um, we'll spend just a little time talking about. So there's um, artifacts across this axis um, and cultures on this lower piece and then there are uh, there's the high context and then there's low context. So when we talk about artifacts in relationship to a high context culture we're typically talking about uh, things that relate specifically kind of to our five senses, right, that appeal to our five senses. And so um, people are extremely important in terms of looking at this high context. Colors, um, items, symbols, icons, uh, pictures, um, the, 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 the way uh, designs are created and whatnot. Uh, the, all these things appeal to our, to our five senses. And in a high context culture, 
when we talk about artifacts, this is where we start uh, noticing that we have um, uh, pieces of artwork that represent the, the clients that we serve, that we start showing in our brochures uh, people who uh, look very similar to the, the people who either work in our organization or are being served by our organization. And so the, 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 that sense of a high context culture becomes important as we explore these kinds of things. In terms of core values of folks interacting with us with from this high context culture, it's, it's typically um, collective in nature. So um, d d d where, you know, in, uh, in terms of artifacts, we may show one person of color, but in terms of the core values of the organization, we certainly understand that we need to have more than just that one person of color if we want people to be successful in, um, in our organization or as our, our clients. Um, we know that uh, folks who operate from this high context culture as it relates to these core values are very thoughtful. And, and what I mean by that is that they typically uh, spend a lot of time or a great deal of time not just thinking about themselves, but thinking about the, the impact of their behavior or, or the, the impact of services on other individuals. And so they're very uh, thoughtful. Um, interpersonal um, skills are extremely important, right? So how do we, how do we uh, relate? And then trust, this idea of trust is based on two, two things. It's based on people or, or relationships, and it's also based on this idea of consensus. So what do, you know, what do the large, uh, uh, what do groups say about this way of, of being or about this organization? Um, what's the general consensus uh, of those things? And so when we look at the, the low context culture as it relates to artifacts, what we see is that um, low context is about icons, logos, reports, metrics, data, statistics. And so these are things that um, appeal basically to kind of our, our logic, right? So um, yeah, that appear that appeal to to our logic. So we need data. Um, we need things that um, can't can't or or uh, be d disputed. We need facts and statistics and and so forth in terms of these artifacts. And so um, annual reports become important to folks who are operating with this low context. Um, that becomes important. What we also know about low context in terms of core values that rugged individualism or the, the, the individual's contribution to the whole is extremely important and valued. That uh, they are typically emotionally restrained in terms of the, the core values. And so sometimes when people get heated or emotional, it's oftentimes um, difficult or it's a hurdle for people who operate from this low context uh, point of view to, uh, to interact with that. And that, um, you know, intrapersonal relationships. So as opposed to, you know, what is our um, individual one-on-one -on -one relationship, but how do we work across groups uh, becomes important. And trust is is built or sustained by uh, by policies and organizational development. So I, I trust the leadership in my organization um, whether I have a relationship with them or not. And again, these are um, the generalizations in terms of how to talk about context. So we, we've addressed what culture is about around its artifacts and its core values. We've talked about this high context and low context stuff. The, another dimension that I wanted to add to this is, um, is the organizational development dimension. So the org development dimension, which when we talk about the individual as a as it relates to all four of, of these, uh, we want to talk about the who. A good way to talk about that is to think about that in terms of diversity. So I'm writing the word diversity right here, right? So, so diversity is looking at the individuals, who's here, who shows up, who's a part of the process. Um, when we start talking about um, groups of people, we start talking about this idea of equity. And that's the how, right? So diversity is the who, 
um, when we start talking about the individual. So what individuals are a part of our system? Who's showing up? What are, what's the data and statistics around that stuff? And then we start talking about the how. So um, equity is looking at are people getting what they need given our systems in our organization. And then we have the where and the what, which we will call uh, inclusion. We'll call that inclusion. And another way that I like to use these three things, particularly as it relates to, to these low and high context cultures with the artifacts and values, is the, this idea of, of making a cake, right? So, so diversity is the ingredients, equity is the, the, the process of mixing all of those things, and inclusion then becomes the, um, the process for the, finished, uh, for the finished product. And so when we start talking about organizational development, these are the, 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 uh, the scales or, or benchmarks that we should be looking towards in terms of determining how well we're doing with this idea of cultural uh, competence and, and uh, uh, cultural inclusion. And so when we look at these, these context pieces, we have to then ask ourselves in terms of our organization, are we looking at artifacts um, or, or what, what is the purpose of the artifacts that we're, we're demonstrating. I know that there was a, um, a university in the Midwest that photoshopped a number of people of color into a, uh, a scene at a football game. Well, what they were trying to do was create these artifacts. And one of the things that I will um, I like to kind of remind us is that when artifacts are not connected to core values, they become stereotypes. So when artifacts are not connected to core values, they are stereotypes. Uh, a good way to even think about that is to think about Halloween, right? So th this is a time where people um, dress up in, in stereotypes, not of often not understanding, knowing, or even caring about what those icons, those peoples, those symbols represent. Again, artifacts are the physical manifestation of core values. And so when we start looking at our organization and we look at the people who are in our organization, we have to recognize that the people who are there or the people who aren't there are a statement of our core values. Uh, when we start looking at our, our logos, when we look at the, the things that represent us, our statistics, those are physical manifestations of our core values. And if we're trying to operate cross purposes, this is where we start to see things that are, that are problematic. So if I have tons of, I'm trying to get people of color, I'm trying to, you know, I have posters up of, of folks, but I'm operating from, uh, from a different uh, core value system, then I'm going to have some difficulties. I'm going to have some conflicts. And this is typically where we start to see organizations not doing so well in terms of it, having diversity and inclusion as a part of what they do, um, not engaging um, the, the, their clients or the changing demographics as they like because they're operating from one set of core values and trying to um, appropriate a different set of artifacts. And so um, the, we have to be, be mindful of those things. Um, coupled with this, this idea of looking at diversity, equity, and inclusion, because if I'm looking for uh, just diversity, there are certain artifacts that I would just pay attention to, or there are just certain um, individual characteristics that I'll just be looking towards to, to use. And so the same with equity. So how do we use these things? How do we engage people in a process in our organization? And then inclusion, where and what are these people doing? So, so where are these people in the organization? What are they doing? How, how are they included in the organization given this, this background, all right? And then lastly, I wanna kind of move over and talk about this idea of um, monocultural versus um, multicultural. And uh, you, you'll see a bit of, uh, of glare on, on my screen, and I apologize for that, but um, I think you'll, you'll get the point in terms of what we're trying to get to. So we have monocultural, which means one culture, and typically that is the dominant culture of your organization. And then we have multicultural, which is 
um, getting the voices of the many folks who are in your organization. And so as we move from, um, move from monocultural to multicultural, what we recognize is that um, the, the, one of the first stages, or early stages, of, of moving to a multicultural organization is that we're monocultural, which means that we're spending a lot of time paying attention to the artifacts. Now, remember, we said that artifacts are the physical manifestation of values. And in this particular example, what we recognize is that our values, or the root of, of our culture, or interaction, or intervention, is relatively small compared to the artifacts. And so this becomes kind of a cognitive process. And one of, one of two things typically happens as we're on this journey, we're either in denial or defense because we're looking at these artifacts. So we look at the artifacts and we say, well, we have so-and-so people, or uh, we have, um, we've printed all of our materials in other people's languages. Doesn't that make us multicultural? Um, or doesn't that make us uh, culturally competent? And that's not necessarily the case, particularly if the artifacts are not connected directly with the uh, appropriate right or um, mission-driven uh, core values. And so we end up with denial and defense. And denial says that we don't have a problem because we have these artifacts. Uh, defense says, back up off of us because we have these artifacts. And so it's a very cognitive process. And so when we have that cognitive dissonance, oftentimes these are the two places that we go in terms of relating to, um, relating to moving along this continuum. And then we start talking about the, the effective. And in terms of effective, what we mean is, what is our, uh, our, our mode of operation in terms of dealing with this multicultural um, advancement as we, as we move? And one of the things that, that happens um, in this effective stage is that we either minimize the, uh, the cultures that we're working with, or we move to some kind of acceptance, which typically looks like a, a, a resignation or um, of, of of dealing with these cultures. And so, when I say this idea of minimalization, what we what we go to is kind of that blind. Um, colorblind place where all people are the same. There's the universal human nature, which, which is in fact true. Um, however, at the same time, we our, our humanity is very similar, but there are some things that make us m remarkably different in terms of how we express that humanity, right? So one of the things we know is that culture in and of itself is adaptation to a context. And so as context change, so does um, so does culture. Culture adapts to the context. Now, one of the things that happens with this minimalization is that we go to a place of universality and say, it's not that big of a deal because we're all the same. Not giving, not bringing into um, our, uh, our, our cognition the fact that some of these uh, the differences or the way that we've seen the world are actually quite profound. Although our humanity is uh, generally uh, same, but how that humanity gets expressed is very different according to our culture and our context. And so uh, acceptance says um, we understand these differences and we can, we can um, I believe we can work with these differences, but it, but this effective state doesn't know exactly what to do with those things. So we oftentimes, in this particular stage of cultural, moving from monocultural to multicultural, in this particular stage, we get analysis by paralysis. And so we have meetings about meetings about cultural competence. We have um, you know organizational task forces that that you know, do some fact finding for us. And so we get, um, we get to a place where no actual change is able to happen because people don't know or aren't, aren't sure what to do. And so that's what happens in this particular stage. And then lastly, we get to stage three, which is about behavioral change. And, um, and it, as you can see in, in, you know, example one, the artifacts are very big but the, uh, the core values are very small. Here we have kind of a maturing or, 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 or some maturation happening where there's a balance between the, the, uh, 
the, the artifacts and the, and the core values. And here, we're actually applying those core values in some um, pretty fundamental and important ways. And so this becomes, uh, the, the two ways that that happens is that we become adaptive. And so we take the people who are in our organization, we take the, the ideas, the thoughts, we take the, the low context and the high context folks, and we adapt those things into our the culture of our organization. And so what that might look like is um, you know, focus groups, starting to have focus groups, or doing some, some testing in our organization around our um, racial equity lenses. Um, it could be as, as simple as creating um, uh, pair sharing opportunities where the organization says, hey, we're going to have some listening sessions and this is the way we're, we'll do those things and here's some things to consider. And, and so that will, that adapt, those adaptive strategies, this means, you know, adding to the, 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 the dominant culture, or adding to, um, in terms of adaptive, adding to the organization. Uh, if we don't see uh, where, you know, when we're in stage one, we see this cognitive process, this denial and defense, we see diversity, we see multicultural uh, opportunities as taking away from what is happening in the organization, whereas in level three, we start talking about adaptive strategies. We talk about how do we add these things or what value gets added by having folks participate at these particular levels. And then we move into uh, this idea of integration. And integration basically is how do we start to use um, all of the, the gifts and talents of our uh, the people in our organization as well as our clients to best move the, the mission forward. And so um, I wanted to make sure that we had some conversations about that to take this to, to a deeper level in terms of looking at um, organizational cross-cultural competence. Because when we put all of these things together, it becomes very clear that the, the more that we're able to become adaptive in taking um, the folks and helping them move, helping them integrate, talking about where, where they are and what are they doing, right, um, helps us move into this integration. What, what we'll recognize is that uh, if we're looking just for diversity, we're going to be looking just at artifacts. We're just going to be at this cognitive level. If we're looking at equity, uh, we're looking at this kind of effective level. And then when we're looking at inclusion, when we're t talking about actually producing the cake, what we know is that we start having adaptive strategies and uh, we start to integrate people into the system. And so uh, I wanted to offer that as, as an addendum to that particular workshop. Um, because I think it's important to, to recognize how we start to do those things. And so when we see artifacts, what we have to understand and recognize, when, when there are people missing, when there are people who are seen, those are all physical manifestations of core values of the organization or the system that we're working in. And so we then have to ask ourselves, are we showing up? Do we have the artifacts that we want to show up based on our values? And if the answer is no, then we must go back to our values and figure out how do we um, incorporate those core values so that they demonstrate the, the art, so the artifacts get demonstrated that we want. Again, artifacts and, and core values are, are tightly related. And when you see artifacts, they are a clue to what values that organization or that, um, that, uh, that, that group has. And so um, with that, I'm going to leave you with, with those pieces. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at andrecohen.com, and we look forward to seeing who you become.